I'm D, I have you rums, and this is 1833. <laughs> So hi people, I'm back with another rum review. Today I have the Little Rum Box September edition. Today we have the Retribution White Rum. And we have the Jack Door Cave Spice Rum. There we go. So you know what I've noticed about these Little Rum Box um, editions? All of these, well, I'm, I'm, the way I'm thinking, what I remember is that all of these rums seem to have very, very long names and titles. There's no Appleton Estate single cast, there's no Plantation Pineapple, it's just like all these long, long Jack Door K Spice Rums. Lot of, lot, lots a lot going on in that title. <laughs> all right, so we start, you know what? Let's start the Jack Door Cave. So Jack Door Cave, for those who don't know, is actually a real place, it's actually a real cave. It used to be a cave that smugglers used to um, smuggle rum and other illegal um, uh, sugars and what have you back in the 18 and 1700s. It's in that Isle of Man, I believe. So that's a real place. But this rum, Jack Doyle Cave, so the guys who make these, this are based out in Cornwall and actually make all the rums in the UK. Now, I know you first you're gonna say is D, 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 D. We know there is global warming. Some of you might think there's not, but they, most people say D, there's no there's global warming. But the UK is not hot enough to grow sugar. And I'll say, you're absolutely correct. So what happens is they import molasses from the Caribbean and then they go through the whole um, rum distillery process in the UK. Now, what does that mean? Um, yeah, they go through the whole normal process, the copper distilleries, blah, 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 blah. They do it all in the UK, which in my mind says, it'll take a bit interesting take because what the one of the things about the caribbean and hot climates are is that it accelerates the aging process it ages things in a short period of time but gives it a longer um, flavor uh, a longer uh, you know feel of uh, makes it, it makes you feel older than it is so it'd be interesting to know how uh, this is going to taste as it's been br uh, distilled and aged in the UK. Now, one shout out, one absolutely great thing about these guys is um, they, um, or maybe it's unique at least, is that their whole distillery is um, powered and run by wind turbines that are run the, on the, on their own site. And, look, I get another really unique thing is that there's a bakery nearby and they use the excess heat from the baking process to and they funnel it through and they use it to warm the warehouse. So I think what I try to do with that is, I, mean, I don't really say it much, but I think the whole idea of that is to um, give that philotropic, a little bit of that philotropic, but obviously you're not gonna get the, you know, the humidity and that sort of thing. We're gonna get the warmth and that will help give the rum a nice signature, you know? So let's get cracking the jack door. And how we do. Go for a little smell first. So let's crack that there. Ooh, okay. Okay. Mmm. So right off the bat, there's, there's a lot going on here. I'm trying to so there's a lot coming on coming through through Roman wise. Just trying to identify what they are is a tricky one. It smells quite um, a little nutty, like little, you no, know, like a little datey um, in aroma. Maybe some dried fruits, maybe like a dried apple or dried pear in there as well. The smell of the ethanol, the smell of the alcohol isn't isn't really strong. It's it's faint behind those fruitier scents. But not fruity like it's really sweet. Fruit like it's a dry, like not dried fruits behind in there. Well, I don't want to say it was earthy, but those sort of uh, those sort of not like, not like a sweet, not like a sweet for like a strawberry, but more of your more classic fruits like a pear, pear or you no know, apple, 
um, those sort of those sort of fruits coming through it. So not a cherry, no, no, not those sweeter fruits, you know. Something in there as well. It's not quite pick it out. Maybe a little bit of tobacco. No. Chocolate. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit of chocolate through this. Because of cocoa beans, not like chocolate, like a bar of chocolate, like cocoa beans. I feel like I'm, I feel like, am I mansplaining, am I mansplaining to you guys? When I say chocolate, you know what I mean, right? You don't mean, you don't, I don't mean like a bar of dairy milk or a bar of Snickers. You know what I mean, like the, the beans, right? Tell me if I'm mansplaining. Overall, it's not a bad smell of rum. It's good rum. So let's give it a little stir. Awaken those flavours and uh, see what it tastes like. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I like this. So it's a smooth rum. It's not a winter warm. I'm looking at uh, in the chest. Smooth, sweet, not over sweet. I'm getting like a caramel in there. Yeah, like a, like a sweet like a caramel in there. Not flavouring. It feels like it tastes quite natural. So it's not too overbearing how it comes across in the palate. Those fruitier scents follow through a little bit. So they're not the they're not as pronounced as they are in the smell. They, they take, they, in the taste, they take a back seat to the sweetness of the rum itself. Now, I wanna sort of clarify. So, when I say I'm sweet, I'm not talking about sweet like bamboo rum. Bamboo rum is too sweet, overly processed, not very nice, no. This has a more natural sweetness to it, so it's a sweet, but it's not overbearing, it's not sickly sweet, it's not like you're drinking um, maple syrup, a mix of water. But, you know what time it is now? Lime time, so let's see how the lime enhances the flavor for this. So, little squeeze, stir again, let's get those flavors mixing, open things up a little bit for us. Yeah, 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 it's tasting good, it's tasting good. <sighs> so lime is good. The lime, so what lime does, it cuts some of that sweetness away and brings in some of those fruitier flavors that I was describing when I, um, it's actually a very nice rum, sorry. <laughs> some more. I got to say some for the um, infinity bottle, which is good, I like this. Yeah, the lime is bringing in some of those fruitier flavors that we could smell, but um, couldn't taste initially, so that was really good. But it also brings a little bitterness in, so... Because it's cut in the sweetness, you feel like the, the, there's a more of a bitter taste coming through. So I guess it depends on what your taste preferences. If you want a bit of a bitterness, have a slice of lime. If you want to keep it quite sweet, then I'll say keep it how it is about the lime. Yeah. So I know, I know what you're here for. Scores and adores. So um, I would say firstly, good rum. Great flavors with or about a slice of lime. I would also say this would work very, very well. Very, very, very well. If I had the lime, it would like work very well with some ginger beer. Again, with and again with the lime, I can also I can see this working well with a good quality lemonade. Hundred percent certain of that. But you want to know what I'll score it. So now we do. We got buy and keep, buy and enjoy. I and not bother with it. So, I reserve my buy and keeps 
for those really special rums, those great sipping rums, those rums you just want to hoard to yourself and like just pull out on a special occasion. And my band enjoys all what does a little bit of like that. We just you have some friends around having a little chat. It's not you're not trying to get drunk, you just enjoy each other's company. What we call in the Caribbean a reasoning. I think it's a good reasoning rum. It's not quite, not quite special enough to be a buy and keep, but it's a definitely a buy and enjoy. So that's my recommendation, the Jack Door Cave Spice Rum. 